The fourth way to help students gain uh, self-efficacy is through physiological arousal. Physiological arousal is excitement and being ready to learn, being excited to be here and ready to go. There are lots of strategies to help your kids get excited and lots of strategies for them to show that they're ready to learn and then know that they're ready to learn, to be confident that they're ready to just get at it. I'm lucky. I'm very lucky that I have been able to go to the Ron Clark Academy. And I'm not sure if you're familiar with him and his theories or his school, but man, is that guy the master of getting kids and adults excited. I had a lot of things that I took away from that experience, but one of those is if you're looking around and people are starting to zone out or they're not super motivated or uh, dare say it, they look bored or tired, hop up on a table. I'm serious. This man hops up on a table and it gets everybody's attention and everybody gets excited. They're always dancing and singing and having a good time. And he is just the king of excitement. Anything you can do to get your kids excited about learning is well worth the time. Think about what's comfortable to you. Like not everybody is cool enough or comfortable hopping up on a table, but hey, you could sing, you could dance, you could shout, you could drum. There are lots of things to get kids excited about art class. I have a lot of teachers in my school that chant and they use a lot of chants with kids. And I'm always amazed because a few of them, like they're too like popular kind of urban songs and the kids are like dropping it down. And I really i don't have a creative brain to be able to make some of those but if somebody else makes it up i can use it i can't sing well but i can use it there are things you can do to get kids ready to learn excited to learn like welcome songs like everything from a, a lineup song to a how to wash your put your paintbrush away song you can make a song or a chant about anything to get kids excited they love it um, I like to do Mona Lisa Ready, and um, that's something that I teach at the beginning of the school year to have kids show that they're ready to learn. But it's not only them to show me that they're ready to learn, them to know that they're ready to learn. And what I'll say is show me Mona Lisa, or show me the Mona Lisa, your Mona Lisa Ready. And what they're doing is they're sitting up straight, their voice is off, their hands are folded, on their lap or on their table depending and I'm ready for art class and that really helps them know that they're ready to learn it just like sets the tone okay all right now she's gonna tell us what we're doing and we're gonna do it and finally this is something I um, picked up from a, a workshop uh, five or six years ago now I went to Grace Dearborn's workshop and she is the author of conscious classroom management and several other books and there was one thing that she said that just spoke to me. And it's a simple little thing. I'm sorry if you're disappointed because I, I just like made it into this huge thing. She said, all the time, I was telling kids, turn to page 74. And then some kid would say, what page? 74. Please turn to page 74. What page was that? And it would take her three to five to six minutes for a simple little direction turn to page 74. She said it took her a few years of teaching before she realized instead of saying turn to page 74 if I have a picture that shows them what they need to be ready my visual kids my kids that need modeling they will get it and I won't have to read myself a hundred times so I took that practice to heart and when we are getting ready to do things like paint I always have a picture on the board so I'll have like the objective what we learned about that day and then I'll have a picture for their supplies they know that they need to have their paper towel 
they need to have their paintbrush, their paint, their water, it all needs to be on their paper towel. It needs to be right in front of them so they can access the materials. They know exactly what it looks like to be ready to do whatever it is we're doing that day. Again, a simple little thing, but instead of saying, get this, get this, get this, get this, get this, wasting your time, you only have these kids for 45 minutes, you don't have a lot of time, show them what they need. And then they can check for themselves. Oh, I got that check. I got that check. I got that check. And then they're ready to go. Simple thing, but it's saved me time. And it's helped kids also to know that they're ready. They're ready to learn. And, you know, that's a little bit of excitement. And like they get all the supplies. They're ready. Okay, we're ready to paint now. Let's go. All right. And now for our third and final SEL competency that we're going to discuss today. Social awareness. Social awareness is the ability to take the perspective of and empathize with others from diverse backgrounds and cultures, to understand social and ethical norms for behavior, and to recognize family, school, and community resources and supports. Specifically, we're going to focus on appreciating diversity. When choosing your exemplars, it's important to have a balance. You want to choose art from around the world, contemporary artists, include components of youth culture, and the great masters. It's important that in our artist exemplars that we choose that we include art from around the world. I know that when I was a child um, in social studies, we studied and learned about different countries and different cultures and the way people live all over the world. I remember a unit on China, not all the time with Chinese New Year. I remember learning about Australia and the Aboriginal people. There were so many things that I learned about in social studies class that really just enriched my life. Now, in Harford County and maybe even other counties, I'm not sure, but social studies has definitely been put on a back burner. Science has definitely um, taken priority and, and I'm not against science. I think it's super important, especially to be competitive, um, but social studies has been like swept, swept under the rug. It's crazy to me that we can be in a business meeting with somebody on the other side of the world. Our students in the future when they're adults, could be in a business meeting with somebody on, in China, but yet have never really learned about the country of China, its history, or the culture, or the people that live there. That seems to me something that's really neglected in the way we're raising children and teaching children now as a field of education. And I think that art teachers have a responsibility to pick up some of that slack. Art and is a vehicle to culture. And we have a responsibility to make sure that kids are at least minimally exposed to some of these countries and cultures. When we are choosing our artist exemplars, it's important to include examples of contemporary art. This is something that um, I didn't really do as a beginning art teacher. It took me a while to, to get into contemporary art and really start integrating that. I focused more on the great masters and from art from around the world, but things that were like pertinent now, I definitely um, really haven't started including those till the last few years. I really see how important it is in, for a bunch of reasons. One. Uh, artists right now are making statements, they're making social commentary, and contemporary art can be used as, as conversation starters about contemporary issues. Um, I know some of them are sensitive, you know, you have to really go with what you're comfortable with and what you're comfortable talking about in your classroom and how to bring things up. Um, I'm not asking anybody to go completely out of their comfort zone, but I mean, this one right here is a good example. The bottom one, that's actually a uh, a piece about environmental change and how humans are destroying the planet. And you can really have that be a great conversation starter about an important topic. It's really important to know the demographics of your school. 
if you haven't checked it out lately, check it out. I recently had to pull mine for Roy Williams Elementary School for a program I'm in, and I realized that one of the growing populations in my school is two or more races. Whether that's because um, there are more interracial relationships or because more people are choosing that as an option on um, surveys, I'm not sure, but that's a growing population in my school and I wanna make sure that um, I'm including them. I think it's important that uh, children see examples of artworks with students in them that look like them people that look like my students so they can see themselves in art and not just see a single story. If you ever get a chance, check out a TED Talk by um, Chimamanda Nozi Adichie and it's entitled The Danger of a Single Story and she talks about growing up in Africa and how she had picture books and um, the people all looked the same and they lived a certain lifestyle and she kind of thought that that was the way everybody was and that's the way it should be. And then as she went further out into the world and saw different types of people in different types of situations, she learned that like she was really gypped in a way. She was only seeing one tiny little perspective, one single story. And really the world has so much more to it than just one single story. There's a really good book by Christopher Emden called For White Folks Who Teach at the Hood. And it has some really good tips in it, some really cool things. But one part about it that I found that really connected uh, for myself was embracing youth culture. He talks about um, a lot of teachers that struggle, that work in more urban areas, and they have a hard time kind of getting the kids on their side. Because it's almost like, you know, you live this way, I live this way, like really, what's our common ground? And one of the suggestions he made to a new teacher who was struggling with her class was go out, get yourself a cool pair of sneakers, a cool jacket, and walk into the room and see if the kids notice. He said, you know, the kids today are so brand conscious and um, just embrace that, go with that, use that. You know, if your kids are obsessed with tennis shoes and they're always walking in with their fresh new shoes, embrace that. Have them design sneakers, have them draw sneakers, have them make prints with their sneakers. There is so much you can do that really just capitalizes on what kids are interested in nowadays. Fortnite, Minecraft, the, the options are unlimited. Embrace it, roll with it, don't fight it. Okay, and TikTok, y'all know what I'm talking about. That girl over there who's supposed to be doing her assignment and she's like twitching and doing things and going like this and you're like wondering if she's having a seizure. No, she's not. It's a TikTok dance. How can we embrace that? How can we roll with that? Hey, can that girl make up a TikTok dance that tells about an art concept? Could she make up a TikTok dance or take the actual moves from a TikTok dance and then put it to something else that relates to your classroom? Embrace it. They're not having seizures. Embrace the fun, the youth culture. And it's important to still include exemplars from the great masters. All children should be exposed to the classics in order to level the playing field. Let's face it, many of our students will never set foot in an art museum. So it's kind of our responsibility to expose them to things that they might not have ever seen if it weren't for art class. There is a foundation it's called the Core Knowledge Curriculum Foundation. That'll be the next resource you look at. Um, they basically have identified in all subject areas what they think are the main things that every child in America should know by the time they graduate. And then they've broken it down like um, spiraling, spiraling curriculum that like builds. And um, I would like you to look through that, the part for the visual arts and see what they have identified as the things that every student should know to kind of level the playing field. And, um, you know, there's some controversy about it because it's, it is limiting. You know, a lot of the things that they say that everybody should know about are a bunch of dead white guys. Um, and there's more, more to art, more to history than just dead white guys. 
But there are a few things that I feel like if our children, um, when they grow up and they see, you know, Starry Night, they'll be like, oh, yeah, I remember that from our class. That's the one with the Starry Night sky that they can like kind of quickly culturally identify with something that just kind of everybody else knows. Broad knowledge is also critical for ameliorating class distinctions and placing all citizens on more equal footing. That is the theory of the core knowledge sequence. I would say that we need a balance. You can't just teach about the great masters. You need to also teach about contemporary art. You need to embrace youth culture and art from around the world and make sure you're representing um, diversity. But yeah, there are uh, some things that everybody should know about. And it would be um, kind of a disservice on our parts if we didn't expose our students to them. So take a few minutes to look through the core knowledge sequence and the different things that they have identified in elementary school visual arts curriculum that they think are vital. And maybe just think about which parts you think are vital. Do you agree? Do you disagree? Does something need to be added? Is something in there that's not important? Look through it. Let me know what you think.